David, can you hear me? I was just about to say, did you already check your audio? We can hear you. You're good to go. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is the detention docket for the 323rd Judicial District Court of Tarrant County, Texas, the designated juvenile court for Tarrant County. The Texas Supreme Court, in compliance with guidance offered by the Office of Court Administration, has directed that all courtrooms in the state of Texas close their doors to the public, however, in keeping with the spirit of the open courts provision of the Texas Constitution. These hearings are being broadcast live on YouTube, except where otherwise directed by Section 5408 of the Texas Family Code. Any rebroadcast or recording of these hearings is expressly forbidden. Violation of the court's order may subject you to civil and or criminal contempt. Are you Charisma Carter? Yes, sir. All right, Ms. Carter. <coughs> This is a detention hearing to determine if you should remain in detention or be released to a parent or guardian. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney. Your attorney, Mr. Ferguson, is here to guide and represent you. Um, the law says when you're brought into detention, you must see a judge within two business days. This is your initial detention hearing. You were previously scheduled to court, actually in front of me, um, back in July and failed to appear. So a directive to apprehend was issued for you for that failure to appear. Um, and so I find that there's probable cause to detain you. Anything else, Ms. Paxton? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Judge, if, if I may, 
we're we were going to do a psychological on her, correct? But that never happened. That's correct. Can we schedule it now? Yes, I will get okay. it scheduled. All right. So, Charisma, I will call you uh, later today. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Nothing further, Judge. All right. Thank you. Hey, Judge. Um, Judge yes. Porter. I'm sorry, yes. mom. Mom was in the lobby and uh, they didn't let us know, so she actually just walked. In. All right. She's here. I'm sorry. Um, mom, do you have Mr. Ferguson's phone number and contact information? No, I do not. All right, Miss Paxton will be able to provide that information to you. Okay. Um, do you have Miss Paxton's contact information? Yes. All right. It's really important that you get in touch with Miss Paxton. Um, uh, when she calls you, if you'll call her back that usually she only calls you if it's important. So she needs yeah. to hear back from you. All right. Um, Ms. Carter, uh, basically today I'm going to order that you be detained. You're likely to have gone from the jurisdiction of the court. If I were to release you today, uh, have they explained to you the levels in the back? Yes, sir. Is that a no or a yes? Yes, sir. All right, I need you to get to level 1.0 and I need you to maintain it. Um, that way, if I can, if you can show me that you can follow the rules in the back, then that might give me a good reason to believe that you would follow the rules at home if I were to release you. However, if we see each other in two weeks and you're still at level two or worse, level three, you won't be going home. All right, so it's in your best interest. If you want to try to go home, you got to earn your way there and get to level 1.0 and maintain it, all right? Yes, yes ma'am? Yes, sir. All right, that'll be the order of the court. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, I just let her in. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, thank you, Jorge. Thank you. Oh. Why can't you speak? Screen's <clears throat> All right. Are you Alice Cavazos? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Cavazos, the law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days. This is your 10-day detention hearing. You have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all. You also have the right to an attorney. Mr. Beaver, your attorney is here to help you. Do you see him on the screen? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Now, last time you had a detention hearing, you had it in front of Judge Kim, right? With Judge Kim, yes. Okay. And he told you if you maintained level 1-0 for 10 days that you could get to go home, right? Yes. All right. You're at day eight, aren't you? Or he told you two weeks, not 10 days. He told you two weeks. And you got two more days before you're – so that makes you – this is day 12, right? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to order that you be detained today. However, you keep level 1-0. Wait, you keep level 1-0 from now until Sunday, and you can go home on Sunday because that will be day 14. All right? Alice? Alice? That's, that's the agreement you have with Judge Kim. So you just have two more days, okay? And you can go home on Sunday, okay? Um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna order you to be detained today. However, I think you can do it. I think you can keep your level 1-0 until Sunday. So um, Ms. Rojas? Yes. I have already signed the order for her release on Sunday, provided she maintains level 1-0 and she can be released on the electronic monitor. Okay, thank you. All right, and is that mom in the parents' room? I believe so. Okay. Uh, yes, Jen, she's here, I'm sorry. We can unmute it. <coughs> mom, can yeah. you hear me? You're gonna get see. See, yes. All right. I'm going to keep 
your daughter in detention today and tomorrow, but if she maintains her perfect behavior in the back through Sunday, she may come home on Sunday, okay? Okay. She understands it. Is, would you like for her to come home on Sunday? Yes, Judge. As long as she's ready to follow the rules at home as well. She, she wants her home. All right. Now, unless you heard, you heard your mom, your, your mom's requirement is that you have to follow the rules at home. Are you willing to do that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Any objection, Mr. Beaver? Your Honor, I, I was hoping that she would go home today after being on outstanding one uh, outstanding since August 30th. So, well, Judge Kim said two weeks, and she's two days shy. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. That'll be the order of the court. Thank, Thank you. you. Rojas, does she need to get the AM on today? Uh, no, on Monday. Uh, excuse me, on Sunday or. Um, but not today. Alice, I'll call you later. Thank you, Your Honor. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. Thank you. I'm going to date the orders for the 20th, I mean the 13th. <coughs> All right. Andrew Wade. So we got Joseph Flores next. Andrew. <coughs> okay, All right, are you Joseph Flores? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Flores, the purpose of this hearing is to determine proof of entitlement for your return to the state from which it is alleged that you fled. Um, <coughs> <coughs> and Ms. Rojas, can you fill me in uh, a little bit more about this particular young gentleman? Your Honor, um, I, well, he's here on a runaway. He got picked up at mom, biological mom's home. It appears that mom lives here um, and he wanted wanted to live to live with mom, so he made his way down here. Um, I spoke to I spoke to Joseph today and he's in adamant that he wants to stay here living with mom. Um, grandma has custody of him. I tried to call grandma, but um, I couldn't get a hold of her on the phone. Um, but she did file a runaway uh, police report in Clovis, New Mexico on Joseph. Okay. And with Joseph, um, he's told me that he's always been in contact with mom and, it, and, you know, throughout the years. So, but he's lived with grandma his whole life. Okay. Grandma is aware though that Joseph is here because they made contact with her last night. All right. <clears throat> Uh, how, which police agency picked him up? Arlington. And how did they know where he was? Do we know? No, they, um, I don't know. I, I don't. It just indicates that they were dispatched um, to mom's home in an attempt to pick up the runaway. Okay. So it sounds like grandmother suspected he was here. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, Joseph, um, let's see. Okay. I agree. Uh, Joseph, do you wish to voluntarily go back to New Mexico? Or do you, you want to, you want to stay here? Well, 
stay here, then I won't be staying in a ju no, well, in a juvenile detention center. If I go back, um, it's gonna be the same. So that's what I'm like, how does that work? Cause for some reason, yeah, I, I didn't spend my own money to go buy a ticket or flight and come down just to have a peaceful life with my biological mother. Like over there, they're just controlling. They want what they want. And for example, I'm 16. Yeah, like I got things to take care of, my education and my school, like whatever I gotta do. And then they just want the money and like, okay, well, you gotta obey this, you gotta obey that. And yeah, it is true, you know, you got the chores, you got what I gotta do. But except that they want more than was that. And like how I told the cops, I got evidence where my father, meaning grandpa father, told me, don't come back. And it was that night when they found out I was with my biological mother. Even when I was sitting down at the table and I told him, hey, you know what? I'm gonna move with my biological mother. They said, okay, good luck, but never come back to the house. But yeah, All right. I was out of the house for two weeks on her. Living on my own, paying on my own. And this is how they want me to, this is how they want me to feel and be right now. <clears throat> All right. The law says when you run away from home and you run to a different state mm. uh, and a report is made uh, from one state to another, the, in your case, New Mexico can ask for Texas to send you back to New Mexico. Mm. <clears throat> you have two choices. You could either voluntarily go back or you can fight going back. And that is it's totally your right to do what you want to do. Uh, if you decide that you want to fight going back to New Mexico, <coughs> then I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you. We will have a separate hearing okay. between now and then. The Juvenile Probation Department will contact uh, our office down in Austin, and then Austin will contact the officials in New Mexico and get some paperwork together. <coughs> And then the officials in New Mexico send that paperwork to our officials in Austin. Austin then sends that to our juvenile probation department. At the subsequent hearing, all that matters is <coughs> whether what we call the four corners of the piece of paper are in compliance and that you are one and the same person that is wanted by the state of New Mexico to send you back. All right, and our hands are kind of tied because it's kind of, it's, a, it's an agreement between New Mexico and Texas to follow this process. Okay. But so, if you want to fight it, that is completely your right. Yes, I want to schedule. Back. Pardon? Uh, I want to do the second opinion, fighting, like fighting and going back. <clears throat> All right, give me just a second. Mr. Lofton. Whoa, whoa, yes, good morning. Good morning. Um, are you available for an appointment on a Form 3 case? I'm available, Your Honor. So. All right, you are hereby appointed um, because you are next on the list. <coughs> so, Mr. Flores is from New Mexico. Uh, Apparently lives with grandmother who has custody out in New Mexico. He okay. came to Texas to live with biological mom. And so he wants to fight extradition to Mexico. Okay. So we will reschedule this case. Uh, and Ms. Rojas, will you begin the paperwork requis requisition process? Yes. All right. Um, what kind of timeline do we need to look at for this? The court tells uh, me. <laughs> Your 
Connor. Um, I believe that the um, New Mexico State, the uh, requesting state, has 30 days um, to get us the, the specific paperwork per ICJ rules, and our liaison will take care of that in Austin. Is his biological mom here today at the, in the courthouse? No. Oh! Because, um, oh! Because it's less than 24 hours. And my computer's frozen. What does that mean, less than 24 hours? Um, that's a magic number under the statute. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Ainsley. I don't want to misspeak, Judge. I'm not sure on that one. Yeah, uh, Mr. Lofton, if he's here less than 24 hours, aren't under the um, interstate compact, aren't we allowed to release him to a suitable parent pending a subsequent hearing? But after that 24 hour period, don't we have to hold him? Judge, and I can only speak from the, the adult system. The adult system, they can. <laughs> issue a bond at any time for bondable um, for the, pending the hearing. So I would assume that since that's bondable for a, a pending the hearing for extradition that the court would have jurisdiction to um, release or whatever. My concern would be since we're being, it's an extradition is, uh, my, my concern is what I guess everybody else would be concerned about too, for any release. That's why I, I need mom, bio mom here since she lives local. Yes. But Right now at the current, she don't know where I'm at because the police picked me up and I think they told him that I was going to uh, the department office and from there um, to the juvenile center, but they don't know um, if it's in Dallas, Arlington or Fort Worth. That's what she doesn't know about it. Okay. Your Honor, and I don't see any notes uh, indicating that we talked to bio mom. We have just talked to grandma and that's it. Yes. Because that was our understanding that grandma had custody of him. Right. I thought you said the bionic mom and I was thinking of that. No, anyway. Lindsay Wagner. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Three, three of us are on the call or are uh, familiar with the reference. Say, I don't think anyone else does. That. <laughs> <It's all good. clears throat> okay. Uh, da, 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 da. You'd think I'd have this memorized by now. Um, I am just absolutely certain that if the child has been here less than 24 hours, uh, if a an appropriate adult can take care of the kid, we can release it. But after 24 <laughs> hours and one second, then we have to keep him here. <clears throat> um, so uh, for right now, um, we're going to, I'm gonna order that you be detained so that we can have that subsequent hearing. Mr. Lofton, is your schedule today such that you could double check the court's work on this that 24 hour thing under the interstate compact? It should be, Mr. Mr. Adler is on and I think Mr. Adler um, might be able to, uh, who's much smarter than me, give me some more insight. I'm, I'm, immediately after this, I'm gonna be starting a hearing in the um, 325th and I don't know how long that will go, but I'll be happy to. Mr. Uh, Adler, um, if a kid is brought on runaway status from out of state, if it's been less than 24 hours, doesn't the compact allow the court to release the kid to a suitable parent, but after that, the court has to keep him? Uh, Judge, it is controlled by the ICPC. Uh, I was just looking it up. <clears throat> the last time I did one, it did say within 24 hours, you could release to a parent that's local. Yes. Uh, Okay. But I can look it up if you need me to. Uh, no, that's, that's, I just needed verification of what I was remembering. Ms. Rojas, uh, can you get bio mom's information? I was just looking at the police report and I don't have a phone number listed. I just have an address. 
I don't know if um, <coughs> if Loris knows mom's number by heart. Um, I have her number, but it's in my phone. It's on my phone, and I don't got my phone with me. Okay, so we would have to get um, his property and then have him or try to access the number from there. Is your phone in property? Would did they bring your phone with you? Yes, they have it right here with him. Okay, Mr. Ainsley. It, forgive me, Your Honor, I'm not trying to be argumentative. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if the spirit of the ICPC is um, indicating that they can be released in less than 24 hours to a legal guardian's parent. And if we have this situation where a parent, where the bio mom is not the legal guardian, I guess I'm a little concerned with that. Yeah. Um, so just throwing that out there for consideration. Judge. No, 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 no. That's a, that's a good thought. Let me... And if you'd like, Judge, I can possibly get Daryl Leidecke on the phone right now and um, throw that question out to him. Actually, that would be great. I, I'm I'm looking at the rules book while we're okay. doing that. Okay, let me try. Yes. Oh, uh, Mr. Ainsley, you're right. You're right. And Judge Daryl Ladeke is, is confirmed as well, just what you said. It's no, I just found the rule and it's yeah, it's only to a legal parent. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Judge. Yeah. All hey, right. Uh, Judge, this is Frank. I'm sorry. I was kind of listening in. Yes, sir. And more than one person can be the legal parent. So yes. I would definitely find out if the mom local has some kind of legal guardianship also. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Lofton, we are back in your court. Um, if we can contact, if I can find the local mom that would, if she was here, it'd be a lot simpler to see what's going on. I know we have less than, you know, only hours to spare right now. So, um, correct. So, if, if my client could give the number out of the local mom to, for someone, me or somebody to reach out or probation. Um, I'll try to get his information from his phone. Um, I don't, I'm looking at the police report and they'd never put any information on mom down besides her address. I see. So I, uh, we, we will try on our end if that's a possibility, just to get clarification on who, <coughs> what custody she has or doesn't have. And just to jump in, um, yeah, Daryl said he'll reach out to New Mexico, assuming that the form three is not in agreement and he says they technically have 60 days just for clarification, but he says he right. rarely seen it go beyond 30 and it should be a lot sooner than that, quite honestly. Yeah. So um, the juvenile has already expressed that he wants to fight it. So we'll set up a contestant hearing. Let's uh, go ahead and initiate that process. In the meantime, um, Mr. Lofton, I am here at least until five o'clock. Yeah. But if you need me to stay later, you let me know. Uh, let's see. At let's see. 
14. So we've got basically until about 5.30 and then the 24 okay. hour mark will hit. If we can find evidence that mom is a joint legal guardian, then I might be able to release him to her. Otherwise, um, we have to hold you, okay? Yes, sir. All right. That's going to be the order of the court right now. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Ainsley. Let me get this back to you because he did not wave. So. I knew I was right about that 24 hours, but I couldn't remember where it was. It's in the rules. It's not in, it's not in the statute. <coughs> All right. Miss Brittany, you're muted right now. Okay. All right. Are you Joseph Flores? No, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you're Lucas. Yes, Mr. Sir. Gallegos, this is a detention hearing to determine if you should remain in detention or be released to a parent or guardian. You have the right to remain silent, not say anything at all. You also have the right to an attorney. Your attorney, Mr. Lofton, is here to help you and guide you through this process. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days. This is your 10 day to hearing. Um, Mr. Victorson, what brings Lucas back to court? Well, Your Honor, it's a 10 day hearing. He's been here for quite some time on a number of charges. Uh, the Arlington Police Department originally referred him in custody um, on a murder charge. Uh, when officers arrived on the scene, they met with the victims. Um, the mother's roommate indicated that he heard gunshots and his mother pleading for, for, her, for her life, essentially, um, and then heard gun, gun, gunfire. Um, after the police got there and investigated, they learned that Lucas had a friend staying the night and they had used a nine millimeter to kill um, Lucas's mother's uh, paramour. Um, and then Lucas fired um, a 22 caliber pistol at his mother, striking her a number of times. Um, and then he turned the, the weapon on the roommate that came out to investigate what had happened but he didn't, he wasn't able to um, strike him with any rounds. Um, the boys then left um, and were later located by police. Um, the police report indicated that the boys had given the weapons to the other boy's older brother. Um, he also has some out of custodies that were referred in January for misdemeanor offenses that were pending when this all happened. Um, he's on level one acceptable in the back and my understanding is that the next status conference is scheduled for October the 6th. All right, Mr. Gallegos, the gravity of the underlying offense is such that the court believes you'd be a danger to yourself or to others if released. And so I'm gonna order you be detained today. Thank you, sir. Yes, we have an excuse, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Lofton. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Are you Mr. Giles? Yes, sir. Mr. Giles, my name is Judge Porter. This is a detention hearing to determine if you should remain in detention or be released to a parent or guardian. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney. Mr. Adler is your attorney. He is here. Do you see him on the screen? Yes, sir. <coughs> All right, Mr. Victorson. Tell me about Mr. Giles' history. Uh, well, his history is vast. Um, do you want to know the present offense or his history? Um, so presently he's uh, got, let's see, I'm counting five, five, five count at least petition. It looks like, yes, yes, five or six, Your Honor. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's quite a bit. And um, he has a history dating back to when he was 12? Yes, Your Honor. 
he's been on probation um, at least once before, and he's been to uh, residential treatment through our department once before. Mr. Adler, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> Judge, the mom should be present. Uh, she's getting herself back on her feet. She, she is stable. We do have some pending uh, placement searches probably through the placement unit. But Judge, maybe we can give this young man if he's a level 1-0 strict uh, electronic monitor at home. Give him one more chance <laughs> as long as the mom can uh, talk to the court and let you know what her plan would be as far as supervision. And if he did anything wrong that she would call Mr. Bickerson. Uh, Mr. Adler, do you wanna ask mom some questions? Yes, sir. I don't see her on there. She's on there. Oh, there here. she is. I don't know if you can hear me. Hey, I can see y'all. I can I can hear you. So, uh, did were you able to secure housing since last time we talked? Yes, we have a um, we have. And where a do you live? Uh, in Dallas. And who is we? Uh, me and my daughter and Kendrick, yep. if he returns me. And are you working? I am. Okay, so, so you see the problem is, is who's gonna provide supervision while you're working? Tell the judge, please. I'm self-employed, so Kendrick can come to work with me. So he so, would be with me. And where are you self-employed? I'm cleaning houses. I was unemployed. And at the beginning what about of the school? Um, I don't know because we have court coming, what the court would recommend if I should go ahead and enroll him or not. Um, if I was to enroll him, he would attend school physically um, and not online. Well, Crystal. I don't know what would be better. Would it be better for him to do virtual or not? It, that would be something that I would let the court help me determine. If, if virtual works better for Kendrick and the court, it's not anything that I've even thought past today, Mr. Adler, because um, everything has been, I've lost communication with Dana somewhere about school. Okay, hold on, hold on. Judge, uh, maybe I should defer asking for him to go home so I can talk to the mom and we could have a better plan for the court because of his history. And I know the court won't release him until we have an airtight plan. I have it. Oh, I mean, I'm talk. really crystal. Do. Crystal, I'll talk to you in a minute. Yes, sir. Hey. <coughs> Mom, uh, Mr. Adler is right. And uh, that's actually the kind of thought process I was going through is we've got to have every single duck in a row for Kendrick. Kendrick, put your hand down. Put your hand down. You do. Kendrick, trust me, you don't want to say anything right now because the DA is listening in on this it's and anything funny. anything you say, the DA is going to take down and it yes. only helps her, okay? So you yes, don't want to help her. Um, Mom, we need every single duck in a row yes, Your Honor, for, I, for Kendrick to be successful, okay? I, we I don't have, believe. not yet. I, I know. I know I haven't been able to be in contact with anybody and I was trying to get in contact with several people and I wasn't able to do that as of now, but I completely understand that Kendrick requires a strict plan. I just didn't hear from anybody till now. I, okay. And that's fair. That's fair. <clears throat> Sometimes we can't make all of our plans at the drop of a hat. It takes time to prepare. And so Mr. Adler's right. Um, we need some more time to put everything I, together. I was even trying to get in touch with David to get his transcript. Crystal, please stop. I'm sorry. I'll talk to you in a minute. Sir, I know. I'm sorry, Mr. Adler. Sorry, sorry. Judge. I, all right. I, I'm here. All right. Kendrick. 
Um, between now and the next hearing, I need you to keep maintaining that level 1O. You are doing everything in the back that you need to do, all right? You keep doing what you're doing because you're doing the right thing, all right? And as soon as, as soon as the adults can get everything together for you, um, then we'll be ready to go forward. I know, I know it hurts. I know you're ready to go home and see mom. I mean, it's his birthday. So, all right, that's going to be the order of court. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh. Thank you.